In this video, we will continue the iterative process. You will find this on page 559 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Let's look at another example. The equation of a curve is Y equals 6XE and it's to the power, I just want to make it a bit bigger that we see better because I cannot see if it's now a half or a third. Okay, yes, that's going to be a third. Okay, so a third X. At the point on the curve where the X coordinate uh, curve with X coordinate P, the gradient of the curve is 40. Okay, show that this is this. Now let's start. As soon as you see gradient of a curve, you, you think of differentiation. So find the derivative function or the gradient function. So I'm going to, but please take note. That is, it's the product rule. Okay, so think back of chapter 11, the product rule. So I rewrite the first one, I differentiate the second one. Plus, I rewrite the second one, I differentiate the first one. And then I just do it. Just remember E, I'm just writing the third. It's differentiation, not integration. Integration, it would have been one over a third. But this is differentiation. And I rewrite that. And then I get. But now I tell you the gradient is what? 40. And that's why I substitute it there. Okay. So, and X is equal to P. So I'm, I'm saying to you, and the value of x is p, so I substitute p. And now I'm just going to get it in that format. And now, so take 2 out, then divide, then I get the 20. Always let this lead you a little bit. Okay. And then I'm taking the e to a third p out. So basically that I'm taking out. And then I'm getting p plus 3. And then I just divide and this will be... Um, so this is going to, then I go from exponential form to log form, so a third P, and then I just, instead of writing log, I just write len. And then I multiply with 3, and there I derive that. It, it's a little bit, a lot of thinking, but always look at the result and let that lead you a little bit to what to do. Okay, now... Show by calculation that P is between 3.3 .3 and 3.5. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first make, now I want you to take note, the difference, and I'm going to highlight it in this video, of F, a small letter or capital letter, Fx. Now small letter is, is basically just going to, um, it's there. There's the two and, and everything is going to in, be involved. So I'm just taking that and I'm taking that one over. Okay, so that P must also be in, in part of the equation. Okay, now I substitute that 3.3 and I get a negative value. And then I substitute 3.5 and I get a positive. So this was negative and this is going to be positive. Okay. And then I'm going to say the change of sign indicates the presence of a root between x is 3.3 .3 and x is 3.5. Okay. okay, so let's look at number C. Use an iterative formula based on the equation in part A to find the value of P correct to two decimal places given the result of each iteration to five decimal places. I want you to take note. When I was doing the small letter, this P, I was basically just taking that to that side. But now, if I'm going to work with the capital, I'm just taking this right-hand side. Just take note, and I will, I will highlight it again as soon as I do an example. Okay, now can you remember, I know the root is between, so what will be the middle there? 3.4, that's why I start with it. They don't give it, I just use a middle value. Okay. Then what do I do? I press on my calculator 3.4 equals, then it goes into the memory. Then I press 3, len, bracket, 20, divide, and I think you have to put in this small bracket. Okay, so small bracket, and then that answer, plus 3, close the small bracket, close the big bracket, and that will then be press equal. I'm just going to test it quickly. I said it once, so let's just test it. 
Um, so first, 3.4 equals, okay, so it's in my memory. Then 3, lin, the big bracket, let's just get the pen there away. Then 20, divide small bracket, then the answer, plus 3, close the small bracket, close the big bracket, equals. And that gives me exactly that 3.4183. They said to uh, five decimal places. Oh, I see. Each iteration to five decimal places. So according to me, there's also a printing mistake. It's no good. I checked it. Okay. I think what I can do to, to don't change so many things, I'm just going to, in a reprint, make it to four decimal places. Okay. And that's how I will change it. Then I can leave this the same. Okay, so it's 4183. And then I correct to two decimal places. The same, then I press equal and I get this. And then I press equal and I get this. And as soon as it's the same, so correct to two decimal places, the root is 3,41. I could have also changed it, and I will decide after the video, I could have set to five significant figures. I think maybe that is a good one. I will rather change it in my new um, reprint. I will say correct to five significant figures. Okay, then it will also be correct. Okay, I want you to stop the video and I want you to do number two. I will make it a little bit bigger that you can see. I just want to move it a little bit. Okay. So again, as soon as you are done, you can continue the video. So, but first try to do it on your own. It's, it's really, it's very new, very new, but it's really not so difficult, this chapter. In comparison of chapter 10, 11, and 12, all that differentiation, trigonometry, and all that things, then this chapter is actually not so difficult. Okay. Okay, I want you to start. The diagram shows part of the curve, and I always like writing down at least the first equation. Okay, 1 plus E3x. Okay. And its maximum point, I can see the maximum point. The x coordinate of m is denoted by m. So it's just that is going to be m. Okay. Now they're very nice. They didn't have to. They could just put as they could have just give the point, and then you had to know you will differentiate to get that x coordinate because that's a stationary point. And on the stationary point, the the differentiated equation, the derivative, is equal to zero. Okay, but they were nice. They helped you. They said find dy over dx, and hence show. That that is okay. So first, and this is actually quite very challenging, and I'll show you now to manipulate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is to find dy over dx, and again I need chapter 11 because this is the quotient rule now. So if I do, I rewrite the denominator, and I differentiate the numerator. And then I subtract, and you can make a big bracket. I rewrite the denominator, oh, the numerator, sorry, and I differentiate the denominator. And that is going to be over, and then I square my denominator. Okay, let's do it. So, keep that bracket. I differentiate, so I get 2x. Okay, there's my bracket. I rewrite, and I differentiate, so the 1 is just going away, and that is differentiation, so 3e, e, 3x. That's a constant that becomes 0, the 1. Okay. You don't have to multiply this out. Leave it first like that. I'll show you now why. Okay. It's, it's to do with dy over dx because it's the turning point, the stationary point. Okay. So, 
I can just simplify this a little bit further, and I think I multiply this in and in, so I get 2x plus 2x, oh, let's just go um, 2x e 3x minus, and if I multiply this, it's going to be 3 x squared e3x. doesn't matter if you write the e or the x, but I think if you first write the x here, first write the x there also. It's just going to help you when you, when you simplify and take out the common factor especially. Okay, now I'm going to say at the stationary point, stationary point, and it's actually in dy over dx is equal to zero. Meaning, I put now, remember this is dy over dx, so I put a zero there. And it's actually, and I want to also bring in another chapter, oh, let's just get that pen correct. Okay, and I keep it over my denominator. And you will see now why I didn't multiply it out. Okay. Now, remember, this is, if you think of the turn here, a turning point, it's over 1. So if I cross multiply, it will just be the numerator. But I showed you in one of the previous chapter, this line, this, this um, gradient line is parallel to the x-axis. And then it's always the numerator equal to zero. If it's parallel to the y-axis, can you recall? It was the denominator equal to zero, but okay. That's the reason why, because this becomes zero, that's why I didn't multiply it out. So I will now end up with 2x plus 2x e 3x minus 3x squared e 3x, and that is just going to be all equal to zero. Okay. Now, and I, as I said, you always have to lead you a little bit by the answer. I don't, if I look at this, where, what I must arrive at, I don't see an x squared, but I see all my terms is having an x. So, I can basically get, <coughs> oh, sorry, I can get rid of the x by just dividing all the terms by x. Of one of the, the x squared, not all the x. So what do I get? I'm going to get 2 plus, okay, and in this case, it's also going to cancel, cancel. So it's 2e3x minus 3xe3x, and that's equal to 0. Okay, now... I, I, I still see, I'm, I'm still going to, um, I'm first going to take over. So let's take this one over. So make it 2 plus 2e, because of the negative, I'm taking it over, then it becomes positive for 3xe, 3x. Okay. And again, I lead myself. I can see they take out 2 as a common factor. So, okay, I want to take it out. So it's 1 plus e. 3x, and that's 3xe, 3x. Okay, and now, now, I, I remember I'm leading myself. They divide by 3, okay, that's nice. Let's do that. So let's just going to say, okay, not just we want x. Remember it's x. So let's divide by 3e, 3x. Then x is alone. Divide 3e, e, I just want to see that e is not so good. Okay. 3e, 3x. Okay, let's just move it up a little bit. Now, luckily, I'm ending up here with x. That's exactly what I want to do. I have my 2 over 3. I can see that. But I now have to make a plan with, with this one. This one. So what am I doing there? They are going to know. Let's take this term. Okay, and this is... I'm taking it up, okay? So then, if I take it up, it's going to be e negative 3x. The reason why I take it up, because I see there's a negative 3x. It's just a bit small now that you cannot see it. 
and then it's 1 plus E3x, okay, because it's just a 3 on the bottom. And now I'm going to multiply it out. Let's see what I get now. So 2 over 3, and now I'm going to get E to the power of negative 3x, okay. Okay, let's just, um, negative 3x, uh, yes, plus e, now just, just be careful, I just want to see that this 2, I multiply, keep the 2, just keep the bracket there, just keep your bracket there, because I multiplied in, but I didn't multiply the 2 in, so keep the 2 outside, but this is going to be now negative 3x plus 3x, do you agree? Okay, so basically, this is going to become e to the power of zero. Okay, are you with me still? <laughs> it's a bit complicated. So it's 2 over 3, bracket, e to the power um, negative 3x. Oh, I'm on my way. And anything to the power of 1 is equal to 1. And that's x. Wow, and that, therefore... Therefore, x is equal to 2 over 3 e to the power negative 3x plus 1. Now, as I said to you, it's very, very important that you focus the whole time there and that that leads you a little bit on what to do. Otherwise, it can be a bit complicated. Okay. Okay, so I derive at that and now show my calculations that m. Now, can you remember what I said? If you must show... That x must be part. So just take note, and I want to show you b. To get equation b in this case, fx, that is not a small letter. I'm basically keeping the x, and I bring this one over. Um, negative 3x plus 1. Okay. Now, if I bring this over, now I can do the test. I'm doing the test with f. I'm just writing it because I'm going to move it up. And f, 0 0.8. Okay. So, I just want you to turn that note. Don't just take that side. For capital letter, you just take this side. But when you go for the small one, you, you must bring everything to one side and almost put it equal to 0. And in same. Okay. So, I'm going to put that, 0 0.7, and I put 0 0.7 minus 2 over 3, E minus 3, 0 0.7 plus 1. And then I take my calculator, okay, and I just get that answer. Now, I think we can just press 0 0.7 minus, um, let's make a bracket, 2 divide 3 multiply, Bracket again, uh, shift E, and I'm going to put a bracket again, bracket, negative 3 multiply 0 0.7, close that small bracket on top, um, plus 1, and close that bracket, okay, bracket, bracket equals, okay, the pro problem just, I put a bracket, let me just show you where, I was putting a bracket there, and there was a bracket. So at the end, don't forget to close its close bracket, close. And then at the end, I was also putting a bracket there. So just take it in mind. My answer is correct. A free, make it three significant figures. And okay, so it's negative 0 0.0483. But all you have to notice from that is that it is a negative value. Okay. Now I do exactly the same, and now I just put it 0 0.8. So it's 0 0.8 minus 2 over 3, bracket E, minus 3, 0 0.8, plus 1, close the bracket, equals. <clears throat> now I'm going to read it again for you how I press it. So 0 0.8 minus, and remember I put a bracket, bracket, 2 divide 3, okay, and then you can say multiply, bracket. Now it's that blue one. And then 
shift e why press shift e it's just because it's on top that's why and then i put again that red bracket so bracket then it's negative 3 multiply 0 0.8 close this that bracket and then plus 1 close the blue bracket um, bracket and close that big red bracket and that is going to give me 0 0.0729 and all I want you to see it's positive. And then I say, therefore, the change of sign, the change of sign indicates the presence. of a root between x is 0 0.7 and x is 0 0.8 and that's how you do number b okay let's just make a line and then i'm going to do the final one and i have to do it here just because of my space I'm just going to, oh, no, 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 please, no, take a ruler. Oh, and still it's not on ruler, come on. Okay, there is my ruler. Okay, so now I can say, use an iterative formula based on the equation in part A, okay, don't forget, in part A, that uh, to find M, correct to three decimal places. If the result of each correct to five decimal places. Okay, so let's just start with number C. Again, I'm not going to create a table. I'm just going to start. Remember, this, they don't give me this X1, but I can find it because I can just go for the middle. Okay, so X1, I'm going to say is 0 0.75. Then, don't forget, X, N plus 1, going on. Don't forget, it's capital letter F, X. And remember what I said. You don't take, it's just that side. So it's 2 over 3, e to the power, don't forget, it's negative 3X, not just positive, and plus 1. Okay. Okay, so let's start. Let's first program this into my calculator. So it's 0 0.75 equal. It's in my calculator. Now I'm going to press this. Now you can say 2 divide 3 or you can, yeah, let's go 2 divide 3. Um, multiply bracket. Then I press my E. I must go to shift lin, but it doesn't matter. And then bracket and then negative 3 multiply that answer. Close the bracket. Plus 1 close that bracket equals. Okay. So I get that x2 is 0 0.73693. Okay. And that, if I approximate that, is 0 0.737. Look at that. Okay. Then, remember, I just press equal. And I approximate again. Five decimal. So it's 73974. And if I proc, look at the 3, so, oh, so this is 0 0.7, because that, that um, 7 makes it a 10, so it's 7, 4, 0. And then I press equal again. And then I'm getting 0 0.739, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, because that 8 makes it 3. 7, 3. 73913. And if I approximate it, it's approximated, it's 0 0.739. And then I go for fifth one. Remember the equal again. So it's 0 0.73926. And if I approximate it, so it's 0 0.739. Oh, and now my it's looking just like my top. And I will just end up 
by saying, Therefore, to wreck, to free the small places, and, and remember they set that root, so M is e equal to 0 0.739. And that's how you do it.